that, so that's good. Um, and then Warlock's got a new ability, which I I love the concept a lot. I have a tiny beef with, though. They get an ability called Contact Patron at level 9, which is one of those things that you look at and go, yeah, makes sense. They probably should have had that before. Uh, agreed. Uh, at level 9, this ability lets them use the spell Contact Other Plane. I'm not going to complain too much. I just don't like that it's that they gave us an existing spell. Why is it not like divine intervention that just says its own thing with its own rules? Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's a little goofy. Why does it um, have to be through? At least spell? you automatically succeed. You auto succeed. But here's my problem, right? Spells are written in such a way that they often have stipulations attached to them because they're sort of balanced around the idea of a wizard is going to use all these spells, blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, we need to sort of balance them against each other. So they often have stipulations. The contact other plane spell says, well, ignoring the, the, uh, you can't fail it. So you don't need to worry about the going insane and everything and all that. On a successful save, you can ask the entity up to five questions. I assume the contact patrons is going to specify. You have to talk to your patron. Uh, you must ask your questions before the spell ends. The GM answers each question with one word, such as yes, no, maybe, never, irrelevant, or unclear if the entity doesn't know the answer to the question. If a one-word answer would be less leading, the GM might offer a short phrase or answer. I hate that. Yeah, not like, great. Like, I understand why the spell has that stipulation to it. That I get, because a random wizard is contacting a random fucking entity from the great beyond. Sure, I totally get that. But the warlock calling up their sugar daddy should not have these weird one word answers. That, that feels goofy. Uh, so, you know, like, I don't know about you, but if I have a player who's playing a warlock and they use the contact patron ability... I'm just going to give them a whole scene with their patron. They're just going to they're just going to talk to their patron in a normal conversation. Yeah, because that just feels better. <laughs> just feels better. I already did it anyway in our last game all the time. True. <laughs> you know, True. so like the only thing that this ability will really do in my game is just give the player a very direct way to say, I'm calling dad <laughs> like you can't tell me. No, I'm calling dad. And I go, OK, <laughs> but I'm just going to give them a scene. Either they're going to like, you know, the great old one sit uh, warlock sits down in front of a water fountain and sees like a weird burbling, like creepy, uh, you know, like reflection of their patron in the water fountain or like the celestial one. hears the twinkling of chimes and that conveys the message. Or maybe they just go to their fucking patron's dimension and have a chat like anything other than just goofy. Yes, no answers. I just that bugged the shit out of me. I was like, ah, you had such a cool I, thing. Why did they just give it. them divination then? It, I, it, yeah, I guess because contact other plane thematically, it specifically says you mentally contact a demigod, the spirit of a long dead sage or some other mysterious entity like thematically it already fits, I guess, is their logic for it. I guess, but I feel like divination just gives you more information. And I guess that maybe they didn't want you to have that more information, but like why you're a uh, war, like Well, divination also has a bunch of goofy stipulations, doesn't it? I'm trying to remember uh, divination. It's been a so. minute. Uh, you ask a single question concerning a specific goal, event, or activity to occur within the next seven days. The GM offers a truthful reply. The, tr the reply might be a short phrase, a cryptic rhyme, or an omen. Uh, I believe, yeah, I mean, divination could have worked. It has some stipulation to it, but it is a little more open. Although, I mean, you'll remember, Isaiah, I also made divination better than it's supposed to be. <laughs> true. Very true. <laughs> I often... Brett cast that spell quite a few times, and I often gave him way more information than it implies I'm supposed to. Uh, same thing with, um, what's the other one? Legend lore? Same thing. Legend oh, lore is oh, like... No, sorry. What I was thinking of was commune. 
I mean, not divination, commune is the one where you can ask uh, three questions. I forgot this is also answered with yes or no. Bro, that's so... That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't that's think there's I mean. literally any of them that lets you get a... Here's my thing too, right? And I know I shouldn't be thinking about this in terms of the bad DM perspective, but it, it's it's more than just a bad DM. It's like a DM who doesn't know that that's going to feel shitty. And you're like, you know, if they don't, if they're not good, well, if they're not very good at, at communicating what they want and the player just goes, well, now I'm just still fucking confused, you know? Yeah. I mean, like at best case, it, it's like a, it's a well-meaning, but still annoying confusion at the other. It's, it's like malicious intent. Well, I think the other potential issue could just be a newer GM not knowing, like a newer GM sort of uh, following us, you know, following the spell description to a letter and not really knowing what to do with it 100%, you know? Like, yeah, that too. There's a lot of ways it could be a frustration. And again, for a spell, I kind of get why you have the stipulations. I understand the idea of them for the spells, but for the contact patron ability, specifically for the warlock who has a relationship with the entity in question, it, it feels like that should be more free form, you know? So, yeah. and, and you know, and again, at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to make it more powerful than it's supposed to be. <laughs> and I recommend other GMs do so. Because quite frankly, it's also just more fun for both you as the GM and the player. If you get to have a whole back and forth scene where you're playing their patron and they're sat, especially if they have a bad relationship with their patron, you get to be sassy at each other. It's just more fun than stupid yes or no questions, you know? Yeah. And maybe you could uh, you could say if the patron's really pissed off, they use the contact patron's ability and maybe they only get yes or no questions because the patron's mad at them. You know, I, you could do that. But like, yeah, just let it. It should be like divine intervention. It should have its own. It should just have its own little paragraph about how it should work. And then it should just suggest to the GM. This is how you should handle it. You know, like, don't tie it to a spell. We don't need to tie it to a spell. This is the thing wizard loves to do where we, oh, they're like, you get this cool feature. What does this feature do? It lets you use this spell we already made. I, that's not what I want. <laughs> Stop yeah. tying everything back to spells all the time. It's annoying. Anyway.